Next question is Mitchell from Ohio. Hey, Mitchell, how can we help you? Yeah, so the reason why I reached out to you guys is I'm um, having some muscle imbalances. And the reason why is I was a football player at a D1 school. I was a punter. And so through that repetitive actions, I led to some hypertrophies on my right side, you know, compared to my left, just through the, all those repetitive actions. And I know a lot about it just because I actually did, as I graduated college, I then went into the personal training and chiropractic field. So I'm now a chiropractor and I use a lot of what I've learned from you guys and what I've learned through school to better my knowledge. So I was just the reason why I was emailing you guys was just see what you guys had to say about that. Okay. I so did recently email or uh, purchase anabolic and I love that. I've actually seen really, really good, you know, well, tremendous results just because I haven't used that kind of programming since college. And the reason why is I don't really want to, you know, strengthen my imbalances even more with that program. Yeah, no. Well, good. yeah, I'd I'd move you to performance. That's the wrong program. Yeah, performance would be more ideal. Yeah, maps anabolic yeah. can be wrong for you because it's so barbell focused. And if you have a well, big careful, a wrong sounds hella bad. Well, yeah. well, it's what a, I mean is it's not the ideal program, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> if you have big, so I look, I've trained athletes because everybody's got a difference between the right and left. Okay, yeah. that's that's super common. But I've trained athletes where the difference was so stark. It was actually quite remarkable. I've trained pitchers where I've seen this. I've trained, yeah. you know, baseball players. I've trained soccer players where I've seen even some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, in your case, I could see why one side especially would be so much. A, everybody favors one side. Yeah. So, but this is this could be pretty big if you're an athlete and you train like that. Like it could be pretty big. So, yeah. what I would do is I would do all unilateral work, That's right. yep. and I would make the weaker side dictate the weight and the reps. That's it. So that means you're going to go easier on your strong mm -hmm. side for a while until the weaker side catches Split up. Split stances are going to be your friend too. Yeah, so. because if you push the barbell, you know, two sides at the same time exercises and push the weight, you're not going to catch up. You're going to you're going to continue to have this disparity. It may take you, depending on how long you played that sport, might take you a year of just unilateral work, uh, focusing on the weak side first before you start to balance yourself out. Even more specific for a client, I would look single leg deadlifts for you. All day, man. We're spending a lot of time doing that for sure to try and balance. And just like Sal said, I'm, we're doing the, the opposite side first. So, And this is a, another person that, okay, so unilateral work like crazy, a lot of stability stuff, uh, multi-planar movements, which is in performance. So performance yeah, is two is, yeah. is going to be like the most impactful for you, I think. I would even almost jump you right into phase two uh, to address a lot of these imbalances and, and see you know, how you respond and, and uh, how, how, how your body is, is able to stabilize even properly. Yeah, well, you could also add this. So if you don't have uh, Prime Pro, I would get I would get that, and then what I would do is I would do all the all the tests in there, so on the major joints, and compare the left to the right, and the the side that is is uh, less mobile, I'd sp I would make effort to spend time before workouts and throughout the day of addressing the immobility of that one, so because more than likely there's going to be a, a major discrepancy from left to right for you. And so that's what I'm looking for is I'm going to go down all those. I'm going to go down all the major joints and I'm going to probably pick two or three of the greatest offenders. So the ones where there's the greatest discrepancy between left and right mobility. And that is now going to become something that I try and do at least two, three times a day, certainly before I lift and then focusing primarily on unilateral training. Uh, those things should do uh, do wonders for you if, you if you focus your training around that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. No problem, Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Thanks for calling. I remember the first time this happened to me. I had a client. This was a kid who was a remarkable high school pitcher. I mean, this kid threw some serious heat, but he'd been pitching since he was a kid. And his dad said, hey, he's a little imbalanced between his right and left. I had him do – he walks in, and I could see it, like just him walking. Mm -hmm. I did an assessment, and I was like, wow, this is – huge imbalance. Now he was still playing baseball, so I couldn't attack it super aggressively because I don't want to mess up his technique. Yeah. He eventually stopped playing and that's all we did. Was And it took a year to see oh. some actual balance. This is the danger too of specializing too early uh, with kids. Yes. Like, they really don't... Well, their bones actually... Especially with something way. like a pitcher, right? So you only have so many throws. And, and so to uh, make sure that you get a lot of variety and a lot of different exposure to different movements is even more essential for kids. But like to, to his point, uh, really to be able to isolate both sides and, and work your way through that is going to be massively uh, beneficial. I would say punting's right up there. 
I mean, punting is going to be really close to pitching yeah. the same, basically similar. Same, similar it's the lower body version. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, I mean, and you're planting so hard on one side, yep. always on that side. So he's going to be really strong on that plant foot. He's going to have crazy mobility right. in the in the. Because at least soccer, you're switching it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Soccer, you're getting a little bit of a balance back and forth, but pitching and and a punter like. I'm trying to think of what else is like that. That's that that they're well, dude. You, you know they've done bowlers. Yeah, and because remember, <laughs> your your body is trying to get better at what you do, and this can be this can get extreme. You know that they've actually dug up bones in England and other parts of Europe, and they can tell by looking at the spine, the long bones, and the humerus mm -hmm. bones that they were long bowmen. A long bow is this huge long bow required like 180 pounds of pulling power. It was like made you a dominant force during medieval times. And they would look at the spines, and they they were molded and twisted. You see a big scapula and a big like humerus on one side into this twisted position. Yeah, and it's because their bodies became good at this one sided type of throw. So, which is okay for sports, but when you're done playing sports, now you're you know now you now you're moving weird. So.